Hi, welcome down to the Belfry. This is the Brabazon Golf Course, the par 517th. My name is Chris Ryan, and in this video, we're talking about the driver, and we're asking the question of, should the feet move when you hit the golf ball? Just before we get started, in the corner of the screen, you should have the details for my social media accounts. So if you don't already, then please go ahead and follow me on there. So the question of, should the feet move? We're gonna answer that with the driver more specifically in mind. And we'll come in a little while to why that's more important. But the answer to the question initially is yes, the feet should move. Now, many of you out there, most of you out there, I would assume are gonna be fairly happy with the concept of the feet moving. Because when we finish our goal swing, we would hopefully all agree that the trail heel would be some amount off the ground such as this. But we're gonna look at it a little bit more in depth than that. We're gonna look at more at the lead foot and what that does. Uh, and how that actually should move in the goal swing and why fixing what might be classed as faults for some people could actually make you play a little bit worse. So, let's talk about the lead foot. So in my case, that's my left foot. Now, in the backswing, many golfers that I coach will actually have the, lead, uh, the heel, I should say, rising slightly off the ground as they complete their backswing. Now, this is a move which has been demonstrated over the years by many, many golfers who've played this game fantastically well. Possibly the most famous of those would be Jack Nicholas. In more modern times, Bubba Watson tends to do it. And recently, Lee Westwood has started to lift his lead heel as well. So it's something we see quite commonly. However, some golfers still see that as a fault. Now, if I see a golfer where there is lots of lateral movement off the golf ball, and they have a golf swing which is maybe way too long with too much rotation, then certainly I would address that and we would like to work on maybe keeping them a little bit more stable, maybe controlling the length of the swing. And as a result, the heel might reduce in its movement. So in that case, we would say maybe that heel would reduce less. However, I don't see the lead heel moving in the back swing as a fault. It's something which sometimes happens in certain goal swings. You would never tell Jack Nicholas to keep his heel down. So, the first sort of little part to this is as you make your backswing and as you get towards the top, there may well be some amount of lifting in that lead heel. This is absolutely fine. If this happens in your goal swing, I would suggest you leave it well alone. It's not gonna cause you many issues down by impact. Some golfers who actually make this move will often explain that actually they feel that's a very good way to start their dowsing by re sort of planting the heel. So a lot of golfers can use this as a trigger to help them initiate their downswing. So, we've now agreed that the trail heel can move in the golf swing at finish, and we've also just discussed how the lead heel can move at the top of the back swing. So what about impact? Now, at impact, the lead foot, again, will often, in many golf swings, will have some movement. That movement can often be rotation towards the target, we will often see at the end of the goal swing, the foot is banked a lot more onto the outside. We can often see in some cases that the foot or the heel can be off the ground at impact. Now, again, for me, these are not faults. These are often results of a golfer who is generating lots and lots of power through how they use the legs and how they use the ground. Many of you, if you could make some of the moves that we would like you to make, which is gonna hopefully help you hit that golf ball further, you may find that that lead foot has some movement through impact. The golfers out there who believe that's a fault can often be robbing themselves of power. So let me just hit this shot and I want you to just pay close attention to that lead foot and just look at the position it is at the end versus the position it is at setup. So you can see how when I finished that goal swing, my lead foot was in a very different position to what it was as I started. Now, I can 100% guarantee you at no point ever in my golfing career and in that goal swing have I thought about moving that lead foot. The thought about moving that lead foot should never be in your swing. However, what I tend to do quite well in my goal swing is I tend to move a lot of pressure I tend to create a lot of force through my legs. And then when I hit the ball, I'm pushing away from the ground, I'm extending my body, and that helps me put a lot of speed into the golf club. The result of that is that when I'm rotating and extending, my foot can often move a little bit. Now, if you were to tell me to make some goal swings 
and my lead foot has to stay exactly where it is, what you would probably do is you would really encourage me to be slower in my swing. You'd reduce the amount of power that I can create through the ground and you'd probably affect my ability to achieve a nice full extended end position. To me, I feel a little bit stuck here. I feel like I, to get into my full position, I need to feel a little bit more rotation of the foot, a little bit more of a bank to the outside and that allows me to end up in the position that I was on that previous drive. So, the purpose of this video today really is to just get you to understand about how the feet should move. What we've already said there is at the end of the backswing, the lead foot can lift. Through impact, the lead foot can move. And at the end of the goal swing, the trail heel can be off the ground by a huge amount. Therefore, in the whole goal swing, there is a lot of movement in the feet, but in many cases, that can help add speed, it can help add power, and if we start to reduce the amount that the feet move, we can rob ourselves of those all important things, power and speed. So, if you are trying to create some more speed in the golf club, especially with the driver, having the movement of that lead foot working in your favor can help you. I would suggest that to hit it further, the lead heel lifting a little is a good thing, and as you come through the impact area, feeling that you're creating some force away from the ground, allowing that foot to move, again, is going to be a good thing and that's gonna help you do some of the things that you're hopefully gonna achieve by working on this. So, not many drills in this video, or any drills, but more just a concept video, more getting you to understand and hopefully next time you go and practice, if you are trying to add some speed, those ideas and those concepts will help you progress your game. We did talk about the driver simply because there's generally a little bit more force, a little bit more speed with the driver, so we wouldn't tend to see those moves happening as much with a, a mid iron or a short iron. So let's just focus on the driver with this drill and hopefully you can hit that ball a little bit further. Thank you very much for watching. All the usual stuff is down below. That's the link, uh, the comments box, the like button, and the link to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's loads more videos already on there. There's loads going up each week. Click the link, it'll take you to a subscription page and it is absolutely free. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.